My fellow archetypes and I hurried to the main gate. A fantasy setting had collapsed, and its characters were fleeing here to the archetype kingdom. When a hack author abandons a story, its thinly imagined characters must find a new home until they get evoked by the next under-inspired author. Human and supernatural beings approached. No vicious ability, a good witch clad in flowing robes, a few off-the-shelf elves, and a baby dragon the size of a faithful hound, its golden scales sparkling. I rescued dragons. My archetype is the virgin. We have an affinity for dragons. We also attract unwanted attention from lowbrow authors. <laughs> I patted the baby dragon's head, and it felt like cardboard. It had served as a mere prop, not quite real, but I could change that. I picked it up and headed to the bustling market to buy it dinner. Good day, virgin, called the starving old beggar woman, sitting on the steps of the ornate temple. My friend, may I ask for a scale from your dragon? Not every realm values a coin, but a dragon scale can do great things. Well, I'm afraid baby isn't shedding yet. Oh, I know a way. She scratched above its withers. The wings have but recently sprouted. Here comes one. She held up a scale that glistened like a gold coin in the sunshine, and Baby hadn't winced. She found a loose scale on the other side and gave it to me, and I added it to the scales in my pocket from my other dragons. Grow strong, Baby. Strength gets us through fearful stories. And before I could say goodbye, the world faded into darkness. I had been evoked, and what terrible trauma might befall me this time? I reincorporated in a castle tower. I wore a pointy hat. It's called a henan. Author, do your research. <laughs> An open-sided overdress. It's a surcoat. That was a bad sign. Stereotypical clothing could signal cliché, and clichés could bring pain. A fist pounded on the store. Surrender! Come peacefully! When you're in an author's clutches, you cannot escape. But since masterful authors tend toward originality, they rarely evoke archetypes. Weak authors rely on us, and they can be forced to abandon a story if a character takes it over and smashes it into a writer's block. <laughs> the door splintered, and two knights in dark armor strode in, took me by the arms, and dragged me down a staircase. I was thrown across the haunches of a horse, and we galloped away. And I began to scheme. We rode across a drawbridge into a foreboding castle. They dragged me into a splendid throne room that seemed too large for the exterior of the foreboding castle. And on the throne sat a fair-haired boy king with a bejeweled crown, and next to him stood an astonishingly handsome man in scarlet and black robes with a heavy gold torque around his neck. No doubt, an evil mage or dark lord of some kind. Finely clad noblemen stood around the hall, impassive and unmoving, probably decorative. Is this my bride? The boy king asked. This is the princess Myrat. The mage, or lord, said, she shall be yours. But his leer told me that I would be his first. But I had a plan. I gladly accept your, I gladly accept you as my husband, your majesty. I'm ready to take control of this kingdom. The mage, or lord, stopped leering. That was a good sign. I shall rule as regent until my betrothed comes of age. Then we shall rule together as equals. Everything froze. The author had been forced to think. Then the scene resumed. The story had been abandoned, and I would have to work harder. The mage, or lord, said, his Majesty shall formalize your betrothal with a ring. 
He held up a gold band with a black stone. The boy king wore one just like it, obviously an enchanted ring, which a mage, this was a mage then, could use for mind control, but not if I could help it. I invoked another trope. Yes, and we must make the betrothal at a joyous public celebration so the good people of the kingdom shall see that their future will be guided by our love. The mage, that is, the author, knitted his brow. Everything froze, then faded to black, punctuated by three glowing asterisks. And I knew what that meant. When the next scene opened, I found myself in a spacious bedroom. The canopied bed with black and scarlet curtains told me that this was the mage's bedroom, which foretold disaster. The mage stood before me, offering me a glass of wine, and I was about to be seduced, the wine no doubt drugged or enchanted. I accepted the wine, but didn't drink. Even if it were ordinary wine, I needed a clear head. And if tragedy befell me, I could drink later, alone, downing the strongest spirits I could find. Sometimes that helped. I slipped a hand into my pocket to touch the scales. Could a dragon save me? We'll be working closely together, Princess Myrat. We should get to know each other. Well, I don't even know your name. Names have great potency in a spell. Maybe I could become a powerful witch. I am. The author hadn't thought of a name yet. <laughs> I, I am, I am Jenkin. Yes, I am Jenkin. And how did you find yourself in service to our Lord the King? The author might not have thought of that yet. Uh, my, my family has long served the royal household and served honorably. I had triggered an inner conflict. Good. I tilted my head as if I heard something, then rushed out to the balcony. Do you hear that? War trumpets. My father is coming to rescue me with an army. After a long hesitation, he said, I must lead my forces against him. Princess Myra, I must go. And he strode out. And I was safe. For now. Mm -hmm. Everything faded to black with three floating asterisks again. I found myself standing in a tower overlooking a wide field. The boy king stood next to me. Below us waited hundreds of mounted knights in shining armor. The mage rode in the lead on a prancing stallion wearing black and scarlet armor. And over a distant hill, my father's army came at, a, came at a gallop. The boy king said, well, I have never seen a battle. Boy kings are always naive. And I found myself saying, I have often seen my father ride off into war. The author must have discovered a way to assert more control, but only for a moment. I still had plans. I slipped my hand into a pocket in my surcoat and pulled out three shining dragon scales, one green, one black, and one golden. Dragons, remember me and come to my aid. <laughs> Over the far hills, three magnificent dragons appeared, breathing fire. The black one flew like a huge shadow in the sky its bodies and wings absorbing light as if they thirsted for sunshine. The green one sparkled with scales like glitter and sequins, and with every free beat of its mighty wings, it shed an iridescent shower that swirled in the wind. The golden one, baby, looked tiny next to them, but glowed bright as a flame. Baby flew straight toward me. The two larger dragons rose high. And suddenly, everything froze as the author tried to cope. Then the dragons, rather than swoop toward the mage's troops, flew at my father. They would bring him utter defeat and destruction, and strangely, I felt overjoyed. The author had invoked a perverse plot twist. And in, 
I had become the evil mage's ally. The author should be ashamed. <laughs> With what was left of my free will, I wept, terrified of my future. The golden baby dragon landed at my feet and faced the battle to defend me. Well, yes, the dragon still belonged to me. I could invoke a compelling motivation and create a backstory. <laughs> My father has always treated me with loving kindness. The dragons have fought for him before, for dragons always fight for the forces of good. The mage has a handsome face, but everything else about him repels all those of noble character. I needed to remind the author that the mage had an inner conflict, so I told the boy king, your army is led by a man who struggles against himself. The boy king blinked as the author remembered the previous scene. Oh, he has always been loyal to me. How did you take the throne? Perhaps I could create a backstory for the boy king too. Arthur, author, learn something. <laughs> the boy blinked long and slow as time dilated. My father died unexpectedly in a hunting accident. <laughs> and then, then time resumed its normal speed, and the two huge dragons rose in updrafts. They turned and flew on either side of my father and charged ahead as he rode on his white steed, and they blew enormous flames at the mage's troops. The dragons were fighting with my father. I had prevailed for now. In the mage's ranks, horses reared up, sending knights tumbling to the ground. The great green dragon bore down on the mage. This was my chance to encourage another plot twist. I told the boy king, but dragons know things mere mortals can't. Jenkins has a secret. That's why he's conflicted. The dragon hovered motionless, then resumed its swoop. The mage saw his doom approach and froze in fear. The green dragon snatched him from the stallion and flew high in the sky, fade to black with asterisks. The next scene began. I had joined my father in the field. Two of his knights held the boy king. My golden baby dragon stood at my side. Above us, the two other dragons circled. My father raised his sword at the boy king. My darling Myrat, has he done you any harm? Shall I kill him? I knew what to say even before the author prompted me. Well, I fear he's been enchanted by the evil mage. Then I shall kill the mage. And at that, the green dragon swooped low and landed so close to us that we were buffeted by the sparkling wind from its wings. It swung its ponderous spiked head and with its teeth tugged the golden torque from the mage's neck. The dragon spat out the torque and gently laid him on the grass. And it said, well, as you can see, those of you with supernatural vision, the torque served as an instrument of enchantment. It glows with power. This good man has been badly used. Pray do not kill him. Oh, that was a nice twist. The author did learn something, but enough. The boy king snatched the enchanted ring from his finger. He bowed to my father, then to the dragon. You have rescued myself and my kingdom from a nightmare. I owe you both more than I can ever repay. The green dragon said, oh, pish, you'll get your chance. This is going to be a long story. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. I needed to find a way out fast. Jenkin rose shakily to his feet. I owe you all my life, and I hereby dedicate it to finding the evil wizard. The black dragon called from the sky in a voice that shimmered like the moon. I know this wizard, Tephesus, centuries old and vicious as a rabid wolf, turned by his own evil spells from a man into a beast. This quest is beyond your abilities, Lloyd Jenkin. 
Oh, I understand that well. And yet, I must find him and fight him, knowing I will lose. Well, the right ally, such as myself, could help even the odds. My father said, Tephesus, I would be a pitiful king to let him continue to ravage our world. And I, the green dragon said, would be a pitiful dragon not to join in this quest. It will be long, and our adventures will be many. I realized we were approaching the end of the first chapter of a trilogy. So <laughs> I declared, you shall serve the cause of righteousness. You, not we. I would write myself out of the story as fast as possible. You have no time to waste. Yes, Jenkins said, we must be off. Princess Myrat, I will always remember your beauty and wise counsel. And thus, I and my betrothed, accompanied by the golden baby dragon, walk back to our castle as the four heroes plan their quest. On the way, I dropped a dragon scale into a beggar's bowl. The boy king gazed at me with true love and respect, and the world faded to black. We found ourselves back in the archetype kingdom. Myself, the boy king, and baby, the boy king said, I saw you change the story. Please teach me how. Well, gladly. You begin by understanding the enemy. <laughs> Wizards. Oh, he was still naive. This might take a while. We stood before the ornate temple. Let's have a seat. I gestured toward the steps. For a king, an old worn flagstone is as good as a throne. And for a virgin, the dust of a spiteful path can never soil her sweet soul. Or so fiction tells us, and fiction is lies. The dragon laid his head on my lap, and I petted its beautiful golden wings as I began to tutor a king. <laughs>